Selling stocks here when I was 20 years old. I got out of Columbia, and and although I was 20, I looked about 16, and I behaved like I was about 12. So I was not. I did not. I did not uh, uh, make a huge impression selling stocks. I used to just walk around downtown and call on people, which is the way it was done. And then I went to work for Graham. But when I came back, uh, the people that joined me actually, uh, one of my sisters, her husband. My father-in-law, my aunt Alice, guy I roomed with in college, and his mother, and I've skipped one. But in any event, those people just had faith in me. And my father-in-law, who uh, uh, was a, uh, a dean at the university, what was then the University of Omaha, he gave me everything he had, you know, and and and, and to quite an extent they all did. And so it was, it was. They knew they knew I'd done reasonably well by that time. That would have been 1956. So I'd been I'd been investing five or six years, and and actually I was in a position where when I left New York and came back to Omaha, I had about 175 thousand dollars, and I was retired. So I guess they figured if I was retired at 26, I must be doing something right, and they gave me their money. And then it just it just unfolded after that, and a, a an ex stockholder of Graham Newman. President of a college came out, and Ben Graham was winding up his his uh, partnership or his fund, and and he recommended me. And then another fellow saw the announcement in the paper that we'd formed a partnership, and he called me, and he joined. And, and just one after another, and then actually a year or two later, a doctor family called, and they were the ones that that ended up with me meeting Charlie. So a lot of stuff just comes along if you just keep plodding along. But the record later on of the partnership attracted money, but initially it was it was much more just people that knew me and had faith in me, but these were small sums of money. We started with 105,000. Charlie? Well, of course that's the way you start. And, but it's amazing, we've now watched a lot of other people start. And the people that have followed the old Graham Newman path have one thing in common, they've all done pretty well. I can hardly think of anybody who hasn't done moderately. Yeah, everybody did well. Yeah. So if you just avoid being a perfect idiot <laughs> and have a good character and just keep doing it day after day, it's amazing how it will work. Yeah, it was accident to a significant extent. If, if, if a few of those people hadn't have said to me, you know, what should I buy? And I said, I'm not going to go back in the stock brokerage business, but I will, you know, we'll form a partnership and, and, uh, you know, your, your fate will be the same as mine and I won't tell you what I'm doing. And, uh, uh, they joined in and it went from there, but it was not, it was not planned out in the least at zero. I met Charlie and he was practicing law and I told him that was okay as a hobby, but it was a lousy business. <laughs> So he, he fortunately, wanted... I listened. <laughs> it took a while, however. Yeah. What's your opinion? When you pay more attention to the internet, could I invite both two gentlemen to answer my question? Thank you very much. Charlie, I didn't get all that. So you well, he asked that we're going to be using the internet. Warren is a big internet user compared to me, and. But I love it. <laughs> he plays bridge on it. Yeah, I use a lot of other. I use I use search. I, I it, it, it it's been a huge change in my life, and it cost me a hundred dollars a year or something like that. I mean, if I had to give up the plane or I had to give up the internet, the plane cost me a million and a half a year. Give up either one of them, but I give up the plane. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> But our Charlie's given up both. <laughs> are we uh, are we going to be doing more? And I think everybody's going to be doing more things on the internet. It is growing in importance, and so, like it or not, we're dragged into modern reality. Uh, Doesn't sound like he likes it, does it? <laughs> no, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like multitasking. I see these people doing three things at once, and I think, God, what a terrible way that is to think. Uh, I am so stupid that I have to think hard about a thing for a long time and 
The idea of multitasking my way to glory has never occurred to me. <laughs> yeah, but at any rate, the internet is here and it's going to be more and more important and everybody's going to think more about it and do more about it, like it or not. And of course, the younger people are way more prone to use it than, than we are. But, but Berkshire, you have what? How many Bloomberg's now? In the office? Yeah. You have two or three. Mark? I don't know. They don't tell me about them. They sort of hide them when I come in the room. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're into the modern world. We have, we have three. Mark Hamburg tells me we have three. But uh, uh, we'll reevaluate that situation when I get back to the office. <laughs> Was that? Oh, we're not paying for one. Well, I like that. <laughs> Let's see if we can not pay for two. <laughs> now, the internet, and it's changed many of our businesses. I mean, it's changed Geico's business very, very dramatically. And it, 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 it's affecting, it affects them all to one degree or another. So it, it's, a, it's amazing to me. I mean, people get pessimistic about America. I think just think in the last 20 or 25 years or well, just 20 years on the Internet, uh, how dramatically it's changed your life. It's not over yet. Uh, it, uh, there's all kinds of things are going to happen to make life better. And Charlie may not think the Internet makes life better. But when I compare trying to round up three other guys on a snowy day to come over to my house to play bridge versus snapping the thing on and having having my partner in, the, in, in San Francisco there and two other friends and so on in 10 or 20 seconds, I, I think the world has improved. Well, if I had your partner, I'd think it would improve too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Buffett, in this environment of quantitative easing, low interest rates and, and an overvalued stock market, what value in silver at these prices do you see and do you still follow the silver market? I really don't follow it much anymore. At, uh, at one time, we owned over 100 million ounces of silver, uh, and I knew a fair amount about the supply and demand for it and the pr prospective supply and demand, uh, but I really don't. I, have, I haven't paid much attention to it for a long, long time. Well, it's you know, a and, very good thing, too. <laughs> We didn't yeah. do that well. Yeah. <laughs> we made a little money. Yeah. The, uh, you know, photography changed it. The interesting thing about silver is that there are some pure silver mines, but overwhelmingly, uh, silver is produced as a byproduct, you know, of, uh, in terms of copper mining. And so it, it, it doesn't respond as much to its own supply and demand characteristics. It, that's still a factor as it does in terms of the, uh, supply and demand characteristics of the things of which it's a uh, it's a byproduct like copper. So it's a it's a very small market too. But uh, we came out better than the Hunt brothers. But other than that, we 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 don't think about silver anymore. Okay, let's go to uh, let's go to station six. Hi, Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. My name is Petra Bergman. I'm from Stockholm, Sweden, in the Northern Europe. I work at something called EFN.se. I wanted to ask you, from my point of view, what would be the answer to the most intelligent question I could ask you right now? <laughs> Everybody tries that question. <laughs> and it would be wonderful if that would solve all your problems. <clears throat> but I don't think it's a very good question. <laughs> or perhaps I should say, let's, let's phrase that differently, Charlie. <laughs> well, what I mean is, you're asking too much of somebody when you, you ask him to honestly say what is the most enlightening question he could answer. Yeah, I, I